Sajad Mahmudin was born in Princess Town in 1910 and was the last of the eight children of Mahmudin, an immigrant from the Punjab region of India. When he was still quite young, the family moved to St. James and he attended primary school up to the age of 10. Economic circumstances forced him to leave school and he got employment as a gardener. Sajad worked as a gardener until he was 13 when he got a job as a baker's apprentice. He sold bread and cakes which he would deliver on a bicycle. To develop a large clientele, Sajad gave an extra loaf to anyone who would purchase more than 12 loaves, paying for the extra loaf himself. This allowed him to build up a substantial clientele. Sajad was determined to make a better way of life for himself. He saved his small salary and in the 30s he learned of a small soft drink plant which was for sale in St. James. He had $350 and borrowed $250 from his friend, Najib Elias, and bought the soft drink plant. He later got married to Kairun Khan and they worked together running the plant. Everything was done manually and the plant produced one bottle of soft drink per minute. Using old beer bottles they produced, cola champagne and banana flavoured soft drinks. He would later make one or two cases of soft drinks per day and take them with him on his rounds the next day. Sajad began to understand the difficulty of an East Indian breaking into the soft drink business in a colonial society. When he first acquired the plant, he wrote several times to various soft drink producers in England, inquiring how he could make improvements. He got no replies. It was evident by his name that he was not an Englishman, but an East Indian. So, he changed his name to Joseph Charles, which quickly led to communication. Joseph Charles's clientele was now growing, and he could not get enough bottles to satisfy the demand. He learned that a soft drink factory in Montreal was closing down, and their assets were up for sale. He realized that this would be the source of empty soft drink bottles, which he promptly bought and shipped to Trinidad. The bottles, however, had a brand name, Sono, and a logo, a pilot drinking a bottle of soft drink. Joseph made the expedient decision to keep the brand, which is maintained to this day, along with the distinctive heavy glass Solo bottles. After the Second World War, and with the demand for his soft drinks, Joseph bought an additional plant and went into the soft drink business as a full-time occupation. This factory was located to the area under his house in St. James, and had the capacity to produce eight bottles per minute. By 1950, he set up a new plant at the corner of White Street and Tragrid Road, opposite the Queen's Park Oval, with equipment imported from the United States. This plant produced 72 bottles of soft drink per minute. Joseph was forever striving for consistency in flavors and paying particular attention to cleanliness and quality. He worked long hours to develop his business and single-handedly modified his factory so that it produced 144 bottles per minute. His staff increased to 65, including his two sons, Vernon and Kenneth. And he introduced four new flavors, cola, grape, cream soda and orange. By 1958, Joseph Charles secured a loan of $1.8 million and in January of 1960, constructed a new state-of-the-art factory in San Juan on the Churchill Roosevelt Highway. In 1962, he introduced the still widely popular Solo Apple J. Joseph Charles Bottling Works is a popular and well-liked company. It is involved in many community activities and sponsors the steel band Solo Harmonites. It also supports powerboat racing and Mr. Solo is a regular and popular champion. Joseph Charles was a good family man and imparted sound values to his children. He was self-taught and mastered the mechanical workings of his plant. He was a man of integrity and charity, always helping the poor. He looked after his employees, often providing houses for many. He shunned publicity and was a most humble person. Mr. Jerry Charles was a generous boss to all his workers. If you have a problem, you go to Mr. Jerry Charles, he accepts the problem and help a lot of the workers. We go to him and he told him I like to work his machines, he will listen to us and he always move here. And when I started to work here in the, in the lab, in the chemist, I told Mr. Jerry Charles I didn't like that job in the chemistry because and he moved me from there, he listened to me and he moved me from there and he put me to work on machine. And then I started to work on machine, 
for at least 25 years. My father taught me the word honesty and everything that you do in life, you should be honest with it. So that you can sleep well with yourself. And honesty was his word, in honesty, integrity. And when you made an agreement and he shook his hand, that was better, that was better than any written statement that you could have had. That was the individual he was. Honesty, dedication. Joseph Charles died in 1965 and was succeeded by his youngest son, Kenneth, and his family, who now own and operate the company. The Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce is indeed honored to induct Mr. Joseph Charles into the Business Hall of Fame.